Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Time in the United States, 10 a.m. in Australia or 1 a.m. in the UK. Remember, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific Time in the US, 7 a.m. in Australia or 10 p.m. in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well. We are going to continue working on our Art Deco building cinematic that we're making using the Unreal Engine 4. Uh, we're at the stage now where we're setting up our cameras for the cinematic. We've finished the main entry, so the, um, the garden path. We've set our cameras up for there. And now we're moving on to setting up some cameras for the pond and uh, the outside of the building, just the tree line, that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to continue on with today. Uh, remember, if you've got any questions or anything you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me if I can help. I'm happy to try. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, then that's completely fine. All right, let's jump straight in, I think. So if we pull up Unreal here, yesterday we were working on uh, a camera, that, the last camera for the um, garden path section which is just a camera that moves along its rail and finishes here at the bottom of the step. So now we're going to continue on setting up some more cameras. So let's jump straight into the content browser. I have an empty shot created here that I'm just going to duplicate. And we're going to call this one shot 22. And we'll open it up. Just an empty shop. I'm just going to grab a quick drink here, guys. Just a sec. Okay. So, yes. Uh, now we're going to start moving into the pond area, I think. So let's jump into our viewport here. Turn our camera around so we're facing in the right direction. Move through all of this. So we have this little path section here before we actually get to the pond. And the pond is just there. Um, now, the way I'm creating the cinematic is I'm using three short sections of music, three different music tracks. Each track is about a minute and a half. So the final cinematic will be about four and a half minutes. Um, and the music changes when it gets to this part. So when, when the pond is sort of revealed, the music will change. So what I want to do is I want to sort of create um, a bit of a dramatic reveal for the pond. So I find the easiest way to work out how I wanted to create a camera is to go into my perspective viewport here and just move, move around to see uh, what could look cool as far as the camera shot goes. So, um, I think, I think, I think, because we finished the last camera here, I sort of want to maybe avoid looking at the building over there for this initial shot. I like the look of the god rays coming through here, so I think I want to point a camera this way. Probably... Probably quite low to the ground, maybe around about there. And then I'll have the camera move. And as it comes out, it'll move up like that, I think. I think that'll be cool. So let's do that. Uh, I want to see the tree roots here because I think they look, they look cool hitting the, the sunlight hitting them like that. So um, the first thing we'll do is I think we will I'll just close these folders down so I've got a bit more room to work. Um, I think a camera rig would be cool here. So, um, not geometry, cinematic, that's what I want. Um, a crane rig, I think, would be cool. So, I'm just going to pull my viewport up, drag in a crane. Might pull it back just a little bit. Okay, we've got our crane rig there. Let's drag in a cinematic camera. 
and position it at the end of our crane. You can either put it on top or underneath, but generally they go underneath. So let's line it up with my crane here. That should be cool. Now I need to um, attach that to the crane. So I just want to make sure I know which where the crane is. That's my camera down there. That's my crane up there. So it's one, two, three down. So one, two, three. Let's attach them together. Cool. Um, 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 um. I might actually rotate the camera so it's facing out that way instead of facing along the crane. I think that would be better for us. Should be cool. Alrighty, let's select the crane and the camera. And we are going to add a track, add to sequencer, and add selected actors. That just adds, that adds our crane and our camera to our timeline. Uh, and again, we're, we're cre I'm creating 10 second shots, which is, is a long shot. Um, but we will edit them down in Premiere Pro when we do the final cinematic. And I'd rather have more than less to work with. So I, I, all the shots will be 10 seconds and then we'll, we'll do some editing to cut them back if we need to. Because I'm going to try and time the camera cuts to the beat of the, of the music. It's always the best, a better way to go. All right. Now, um, I'm going to turn on my camera here so in my cinematic viewport I can see what the camera sees. That's what the camera is looking at at the moment. So let's select our crane. We might rotate it around a little bit I think. maybe a little bit more okay now 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 I think I might want to lift the crane up a bit I want to make some changes to the camera too so I'm going to select the camera actor we're going to change the sensor height from 20.25 to 18 and I'm going to change the focus distance to 3000. Select that crane again. Okay, so I think I'll move it back. I want to see a little bit of the sunlight hitting the path here. Let's see if we can move it up just a little bit, maybe. And I think what I'll do is I might angle the camera as well. So I might just rotate the camera a little bit. Actually, I'll, I'll, no, I won't rotate the camera. If I do anything, I'll lift the arm a little bit, maybe. Pitch your an arm length.
Now, how do I want to make my camera move? Um, again, I think we'll, we'll, we'll stay with it at, um, at this distance. Now you see at the moment the background is in focus, the foreground here is a little out of focus. Now th that can be cool. Uh, or we could change it so the foreground is in focus and the background is a little out of focus, which might be better. I think I might just rotate my crane a little bit more. No, I won't, I won't. I, I don't want to risk hitting the uh, the foliage on this side when I move the crane arm forward. So... So we won't do that. I can still see the god race here which is nice so that's cool. I can see a bit of the sunlight on the path and I can see the tree ridge. They were my three sort of things that I wanted to make sure I picked up at the beginning. So that could be cool. Um, but the depth of field, I think it might look more interesting if the foreground was in focus and the background was slightly out of focus. Just for this initial shot. So let's change our... Let's change our focal length here. Let's try 600. Hey Paz, good to see you. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Have you had a good, good week, good weekend, all that sort of stuff? But no, I'm well, as you can see. I have to wear my specs now to be able to see the computer screen, but hey, that's fine. It's only for the computer screen. <laughs> that's why I couldn't stream last week because I had to have them made up. I had to get the prescription, go and visit an optometrist, get a, get my prescription and get my glasses made up. But it's wonderful because like I was saying to the guys, it makes my 27 inch screens look 32 inch. So it's all good. Win-win. Uh, I hope you're well like that. So let's, uh, let's change the focal length here. I've changed it to 600, which has brought our plants into focus and the background slightly out of focus. Yes, glasses, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. Otherwise, I can't see the screens. It's just a bit blurry. Too much old. No, I'm not old, Paz. Come on. I'm not that old. I'm, old, I'm probably old enough, but <laughs> it'll happen to everyone. It'll happen to you. It'll happen to all of you. As you get older, you do need your eyes change. So, and it's only it's only for computer screens. Everything else I can see perfectly clearly. So I only need to wear them when I'm working on the computer, or maybe reading my mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> too much old oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh dear it's okay it's all good it's all good you know me guys everything is all good um so yes our, our depth of field we've got the foreground in focus and the background slightly out of focus not, not terribly out of focus but just slightly for our initial shot. Uh, 18, that's all good, that's all good. Now, I want to start the camera moving. I don't want to have a hold here for, at all, so I'm going to set keys for on my crane. I'm going to set a key for the pitch, for the yaw, and for the length of the arm, even though I probably won't change all of them. I like to have... Um, have it set and ready. Let's move our timeline forward a little bit. Let's go to let's 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 go to all the way to the end of the animation, so 10 seconds. And let's start playing with our crane. Um, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the um, crane arm length. Again, I'm looking in the um, in the viewport on the left, which is which is what the camera is actually seeing. I'm going to pull this all the way forward, maybe until we get to about here. And the your let's see what the let's try the pitch. No, uh, I'm just going to pull up on the pitch a little bit. I want to see the water, so I want to pull it up enough so that we can actually see the water there. Uh, and the yaw. We'll 
we can pull forward. I like the uh, tree there in the right hand corner, the, the sun hitting the tree, the tree leaves that is. Um, Maybe about there, because well, I like to look at the, the dappled look of the leaves. Uh, let's set a keyframe here for our pitch, yaw, and arm length. You see what it does though? It, it reverts back. Hey, Snapper Echo, good to see you. How are you, buddy? Um, yeah, very annoying. I don't know what it is with this engine and uh, its keyframing, but it really seems to have some problems. Sequencer, that is. I hope you're well, Sniper Echo. I hope all you guys and girls watching are well. Uh, yeah, so adding our keyframes made our keys reset, which is real, real annoying. Uh, and it's, it seems to happen if you add keyframes at the beginning before you add them at the end. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down that for a second. I'm going to create a new text. I just want to create a text folder here on my desktop so that um, I can remember my settings. I'm going to start by deleting those keys from the end there because that's really not right. Move our timeline back to the beginning. Select our crane. Okay, it's pretty easy for that one. It's all at zero. So zero, zero, and 500. Um, I'm just going to open Discord up again now. And now um, I'm not going to set keys here, so I'm actually going to delete these keys at the very beginning. I'm going to start by setting the keys at the end, and let's see if it fixes it. Actually, I do want to do it like a hold for two seconds at the end, so we'll go to about eight seconds. Eight seconds. There we go. Uh, let's start playing with our crane here and setting some keys, and let's see if it behaves itself. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is change the arm length again. And then we'll change the, uh, 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 the uh, pitch so that we can see our pond. So that's pretty cool too. We can just see the deer in the background. That might be cool. Let's, uh, Paz says, I see one elephant. These... <laughs> Are you talking about these in the background here, Paz? Is that what you mean? You see an elephant? They're deer. So they're not actually, they're not elephant, that's a deer. That's a stag and there are two deer either side. We, we'll do a close up on that for one of the shots uh, that we're setting up around here. <laughs> no, there are no elephants, Paz, no elephants. <laughs> There's an eagle at the beginning, there are some deer here, and then at the very end when we come outside the back of the building, there are some bunny rabbits in the backyard, or some hares or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> no elephants though. That is quite cool. I'm still seeing my dappled tree leaves with the um, light shining through them here. That's not too bad. I can see the actual pond, so that's cool. Just thinking, I'm wondering whether I should maybe pull it back a little bit, down a little bit. Because I really want to um, get a good shot of the god rays. 
and they tend to look a bit better if, they're, if you're a bit lower to the ground. But I want to see the pond, so I'm sort of stuck between two options here. You're going to capture your elephant, Paz? Good to hear. Rewind a bit. <laughs> uh, Sniper says, God, I'm having the worst time trying to get custom sky map material to work in UE4. What do you mean, custom sky map material? What sort of material are you trying to use, Sniper Echo? Are you using a HDRI or something like that? Just trying to work out what you're having a problem with. Yeah, I don't really actually want to go up this high and I want to save showing the deer, I think, for another camera shot. So we won't use, we won't move up quite that high. We'll keep it a little bit lower. Let's play with the yore again. Like I can hide the deer with these uh, tree branches in the foreground because I don't, like I said, I don't really want them to be shown just yet. Uh, let's look at the length of the arm. They probably are going to be seen actually as the camera moves through. So. And do I want that or not? I don't. Don't know. Uh, Sniper says, as if the UV mapping was wrong. Uh, it's for a space scene, okay. I have a HDRI of some stars, yep. When I set it up as normal, I get harsh square lines when I look around. Are you using a uh, sky box, a sky sphere? What, are you, what, what, what sort of um, what sort of sky zone are you working with? A box, a sphere? Just that'll help me work out what the problem might be. <laughs> um, and when you say lines, I'm trying to work out what you mean by harsh square lines. You sure you're not you're not talking about if it's a box or join the the, the seam UV seams of the box, are you? Uh, Paz says, man, no joke, I see one elephant in the wood. There is no elephant in the wood, Paz. You're trolling me. There is no elephant. I know, because I, I made the scene. There is no elephant. I don't know where you're seeing an elephant, but you're seeing things. <laughs> There's no elephant. <laughs> As if the UV mapping was wrong. Um, yeah, Skybox, okay. You have checked the UV mapping. You, you, you've attached all of your seams together. Uh, so you've folded the box out into like a T-shape. You don't just have your UV maps, your, your squares for each UV in separate squares, do you? In your UV tile. They're all, they're, they're joined together in like a T-shape. Yep. A T-shape. So you've got one box at the top, one in the middle, one either side and two at the bottom. But the, the seams are joined. Um, because if the seams are joined, then there should not be, you shouldn't be seeing seams. You will see seams if the seams aren't joined. But you're saying you're seeing lines, which has got me curious as to what could be going on there. Uh, Snobber says, love me tea. I does, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay, so you're in a T shape in your UV. So that's not a, pro it's not a problem with the UV mapping then. Um, why would you be seeing lines? You have set your, you tried the default skybox also, okay, uh, with the same thing, yeah. And are you still seeing the lines with the default skybox? Um, have you made sure to, I can't remember, I think you set the um, skybox to uh, not shadow and to so you, you turn you call, you turn it into unlit, so it's always lit. It's not lit by shadow or anything like that. Yeah, you're seeing the same thing. Um, okay, well um, that's weird. 
That is weird. What would cause that? You're seeing the lines, so it's not a problem for UV mapping. The only other issue could be the material. Like I said, you must make sure it's set to unlit, I think. You've got it set to unlit, okay. So that's not the problem. Then it must be a problem with the HDRI image in some way. But, and it's, it's the, um, the lines of the box is what you can see, yeah? So that, that they're the lines you're talking about. I just want to make sure I understand completely. So it's the actual the box itself, those lines that make up the box that you're seeing. And if that's the case, I'm trying to work out what could be causing that. Um, even if you're using the default Unreal Sky box, because you can make sure your UVs are you're out, your tries are flipped in the right direction, your normals. But that won't be a problem if you're using Epic's uh, default box, so that can't be it. It's unlit, so that can't be it. Yeah, the lines of the box. What could cause that? That is really weird. I've not come across that. I can't work out what could cause that. The only, yeah, no, if the UVs are correct, the normals are correct, like they're flipped correctly, which they will be if it's Epic's default box. I don't know what could cause that, and the material is set to unlit. Paz says, can I send the capture elephant? <laughs> Paz, you and this elephant? <laughs> oh, wow. You can put your, you can put the elephant anywhere you like in the wood there, Paz. You you pick a spot and you can put your elephant anywhere, anywhere you want. Yeah, it's back on point, Paz. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't work out what could the problem could be, Sniper. I don't know. I that's that's a new one on me. Um I don't know. Maybe just make sure, check that the HDR doesn't have an alpha or anything in it that could be causing a problem, maybe? Maybe? That's the only thing I could maybe think of. Um, maybe there's some sort of uh, alpha going on, some sort of opacity going on, perhaps. Even that really shouldn't cause, a, cause you to see the edges of the box, though. That's weird. Um... What sort of HDRI are you using? Are you using a spherical? Are you using um, a longitude one where it's a long HDRI? Yeah, don't don't post links in uh, Twitch chat, Paz, unless you're a sub. You post links if you want to post them in the Discord server. Um, because you'll get timed out either by Sniper Wrecker or Nightbot. Only subs can post links in Twitch chat, but everyone can post links in Discord. It's a longitude HDRI? Okay. Um, okay. Weird. That is weird. I'm using a HDRI as well, but I'm using a sphere, not a cube. The sky box, or for the sky sphere. I'm using a sky sphere, not a sky box. Um, not that that should make a difference. I'm, I'm just curious, maybe if you try to sphere, whether that would help. <laughs> and there may be reasons you want to use a box. A box is a little bit lighter than a sphere, but a sphere isn't too much heavier than a box. You could, you know. Yep, there you go. You can join the Discord server there. Thank you, Sniper Echo. Just give me two secs here. Just for you, Paz, I will try and grab this. There we go. Let me open up my browser and have a look. Drag it over here so we can all see it. Uh, again, anyone new watching my channel, you can go to phildoes3d.com and you can read up about me there and look at some of my work. But we are looking... Oh, it won't let me copy it in. Great. Okay. Uh, if you post a link in Discord, Paz, I can probably grab it that way because it is being timed out. Oh, there we go. 
just for you, I'll check it out, Paz. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is what you think the elephant is here, Paz. Ah, uh, that's actually a tree trunk. <laughs> oh, and there I am in all my glory. Um, but that <laughs> I can see what you mean now, Paz. No, that is not an elephant. If I come come into my perspective viewport here and swing the camera around, you we were looking here like this, and you thought this was an elephant here, didn't you? And it does look like a bit of an elephant in that shot you posted, but no, that is a tree trunk. So it's just a dead tree. <laughs> That's what that is. Just a dead tree. But I give you that from the angle that you showed me in that image, it did look like an elephant in the forest. From like around about this, this angle here. So you are correct. It did look like an elephant, but it's a dead tree trunk. <laughs> um, we'll register on Discord if you're not registered on Discord Pass. It's free. Just click that link and join. You don't even have to install the app if you don't want to. You can do it all through your browser. No excuse. <laughs> and yes, no, it's it's not a, an elephant. It's just a tree trunk, Pat. <laughs> uh, okay, I see you posted in Discord as well. Cool. Yep. Oh, no, Sniper posted it for you. I'm catching up the chat here. Sniper says, it's not a kitchen fill, but an elephant I can see, yeah. You were correct, Paz. It did look like an elephant. You were right, but it's a dead tree trunk. It was just the angle of the camera uh, made it look a bit like an elephant. But because this is, um, I don't know whether you could really get elephants in a sort of forest like this. I mean, I could be wrong. I, I, when I think of an elephant, though, I generally think of them in Africa. Or perhaps India. But where you know open plains, that sort of thing, less less forested environments. But I do know that they, I guess, occasionally do go into a forest. So, but we're we're not going to have an elephant. <laughs> Got to get this camera worked out. Um, yeah, sniper. Try. Is there a reason you don't want to try a sphere as opposed to a box? I'm just wondering whether a sphere might be um, easier for you to work with, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, because uh, uh, I can't work out what could cause that, unless it's maybe some sort of alpha that's going on, some sort of opacity. But even then, uh, it shouldn't show the corners of the box. That is just mega strange. Um, what version of Unreal are you using, Sniper? Of the engine, what version of UE4? Are you on 4.20? Because I know a few people have been having problems with that version. That's why we're still on 4.19.2, and that's what we're going to stick to while we finish this project. Uh, I'm just trying to work out whether the issue is with the material, with your texture, or with the mesh. Uh, so that's why maybe try, maybe try mapping it to a sphere. I'm not sure how, it's, how longitude is going to go on a sphere though. Normally you use a spherical. HDRI for a sphere. You can actually fake it though in Photoshop. You can turn a longitude into a spherical with um, with a spherize filter. And sniper says, yeah, I just followed some documentation on the UE4 site, but not getting the same results. I'm on UE4.19, okay. Um, I, I don't know what could be causing that problem. I'm just going to jump into my... Oh, see, I have my Sky Sphere here. I use a sphere. Um, and this is my Sky Sphere here. Now, you'll notice that I'm using a sphere. So, because I'm using a sphere for the Sky, bo for the sky Sphere. Uh, and a spherical HDRI. Now, the, the, I didn't have a spherical HDRI initially. So, I, I initially had this which is just um, more of a longitude. But you can turn that into a spherical. And you do that in Photoshop by adding a uh, spherize filter. Um, so I'm just wondering whether maybe trying a sphere might be better for you. 
And you tried like like you said you used the default skybox from UE4, the the Epic provide. So you basically you just swapped out your texture in that skybox, yeah. Because if it's not the mesh and it's not the material, it must be something to do with the texture. Even then though, it sounds really weird. Um Yeah, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd try, I'd try sphere and see what results you get. And if, if, if the sphere looks okay, then it's got to be some sort of problem with the with the box. I don't know what sort of problem it could be though. That's all. I'm just not sure what could be causing that problem. Because I've never come across it. I've never. That's never happened unless the UV map has been wrong or something which you can pretty much find out straight away because your texture won't, won't tile properly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. don't know. You got me stumped there. I'm not sure. And if you're following along with a tutorial, but you're not getting the same result, just can, can you map a HDRI image that Epic Games give you in their content folder? You know, they, they give you the skybox. I think they also include a couple of HDRI images. Can you try using one of them and see if it still gives you the lines? Because we're, we're going to try and narrow down whether it's a problem with the material that you're using or the texture that could be causing the issue. I, I'm leaning some some sort of problem with the material, actually. There's an opacity or a mask or something going on where it shouldn't be, which is why you're seeing the lines, I think. So yeah, just to try, so we can try and narrow down the problem. I, I'd try one of the step, one of the HDRI images that comes with the with the game. I, I assign that, see if you still see the lines. If you don't see the lines, then I'm going to suggest it's probably a, a problem with some setup of your material. I'd say unlikely to be the texture unless there's an alpha map or a mask included with it, which there probably shouldn't be. So the material is probably more of an issue of the issue. Okay, now, oh yeah, I don't want to see my deer here, and I've got to work out how high I want my camera to go, so... I'm just going to play with my pitch again. I can I can hide the deer by, by, by um, rotating the camera. And again, I like the fact that we, we see this here, it's hiding the deer. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy these values into my little text file because I don't trust a sequencer not to lose my settings because it's behaving very oddly. When you try and do a key, it's behaving really weirdly. Now, I'm pretty sure it's not user error, he says competently. I'm pretty sure I'm not doing anything wrong. It's just that sequencer seems to have a problem. If you set a keyframe at the beginning before setting, before trying to keyframe the end, it, it just it loses its mind. So this is the, the, where I want it to end up. So I'm going to set a keyframe here for the pitch, the yaw, and the arm length. We see the keyframes there. That's all good. Nothing is moved. Now we went wide, but I want to change it when we, from the beginning. So we're going to go back to the beginning. Let me zero these back out again. Back at zero. And I'm going to copy my values in again, which was zero, zero, and 500. So zero. Uh, zero. And actually, if I just hit that little arrow, it defaults it back to default. Okay, so that's where we want our camera to be. And I'm going to set keyframe for pitch. You see what it's done? It's, it's already jumping around. Keyframe for your. And a keyframe for arm length. But again, it's, it, it keeps jumping around. Okay, so that's good. 
Let's move our timeline forward and see if it remembered it. Yes, it did. It remembered our other settings as well. So that's all good. Now, I want to... We're halfway through this animation, so we're going from 0 to 8 seconds, so maybe around about... Around about here. Actually... We see a deer up there in the corner. I don't want that, so maybe around about here. I'm going to select the transform of the camera. Um, and we're going to do a rotation of the camera, I think. So I can. I want to rotate those deer out of shot. I don't want them to be set. I mean, they don't, it's not, not that. It, do I want them in shot or not? Decisions. Um, yeah, no, um, I don't know. I hate making decisions. Do I want them in shot? Do I not want them in shot? Um, because they will be animated too, but I don't want to animate them for this shot. Um, just let me, let me play through my timeline here so I can get an idea of how I want my camera to move. Okay. I'm going to set a transform here to keep the camera at this angle because I like this angle. So let's press S on the keyboard to set our keyframes. Move forward in our timeline, maybe until we get to around about here. And we will rotate the camera a little bit. Just took a second for the uh, up for the viewport to update there. A little bit more. A little bit more. Uh, too far. So I don't want to see the deer. So I'm going to rotate it back a little bit. A little bit more. And that should be good. So let's set a keyframe here. Let's scrub through my timeline. So that's fine. Now we do see the deer here. Very briefly, they're only going to be in shot for like half a second, probably. Uh, let me just keep scrubbing through my timeline so I can see how our camera finishes. That's fine. Looking down at the pond. It's still seeing our leaves in the corner there and on the uh, right-hand right side, that's right. Um, just the deer. We, we're seeing the deer. Again, it's not a big deal, but I sort of wanted to keep the deer for a reveal later on. So I think I might do a bit of a rotation on the camera again. Maybe. Yeah, maybe around about here. Let's rotate our camera a bit more. A little bit more. There we go. And let's set our keyframe.
Well, again, we're seeing a deer in the upper right hand corner there. I have to work out whether I'm happy with that or not. Um, a brief glimpse might be okay. People are probably not going to notice it so much during this camera movement anyway. Uh, so we won't lose too much of the impact when we do a close up cut on the deer. And adds a bit of context, I guess, as to where in the scene the deer actually are. Camera animation is an art, Paz. I agree. It, it, it is an art form all to itself. Um, cinematography is, uh, yeah, something people train for as, as a separate field, and they do just that. <laughs> so you are correct, Paz. It is. It is an art unto itself. Let me just scrub through my timeline here so I can see what's going on. Uh, so we start the camera moving along our path there. As it moves forward, the camera starts to pull up on the rig. We see just a glimpse of the deer in the background. The camera starts to rotate and keeps moving up. We see our pond. And we finish with just a glimpse of the leaves and the top on the right hand side where we hold for two seconds. So it's going, to, it's going to be a bit glitchy in the viewport but I'm just going to play it through a couple of times on, re on repeat so we can get an idea of what's going on. And we're in the wrong viewport. This is the one we want. So, start the camera moving, we move along the path. As we move along, the camera starts to pull up. We rotate around to focus in on the pond and to highlight the god rays. And finish with the tree in the corner, where we hold for two seconds. That should be cool. Let, let's work on another camera. So let's do a save all. Uh, because remember, what I do is on we work on the cameras on stream, and then between today and Monday next week when I'm back live, I'll render out the uh, camera images and Put, put it together into a, uh, an MP4 file that we can view so we can do a review of the cameras in real time or well, a review of the cameras rendered out uh, on Monday stream we just so we do that every Monday first thing review the cameras from the previous week's work Pat says there we go I always see my oven now <laughs> I'm actually going to be doing a camera now close up on that tree trunk so we're we going to we're going to do a close up on your elephant Pat so let's jump back into our content browser, select our empty shot, duplicate it. And this is going to be shot 23, unless I'm mistaken. We'll open that up and it's a nice blank shot. All right, let's jump into our viewport here and let's move forward to where, uh, where Paz's elephant is, which is just here. And let's move around in our viewport so we can get an idea of how we want to tackle this shot. Now, certain angles are going to give us nicer god rays. So, less god rays facing into the sun, more god rays as we turn away from the sun. So I want to try and keep my camera facing this direction. Uh, also, because I want to hide the, the deer up there. So if we start a camera, what's an interesting camera angle? Um, I 
Um, um, we could sort of start maybe with a close-up, pull back, and then as we pull back, move across. So we're pulling back and moving across. That could be cool. Let's do that. Uh, now for this one, I'm going to use a rail, I think. Camera rail rig. So let's get a bird's eye view so I can lay my rail down. So the rail, we'll start with you. Let me just move it over a little bit. And let's put a camera for our rail. Move you over and move you up. Move up there. Uh, same as Sniper says, it's got to be the texture. So using Epic's HDRIs, you didn't have the problem. No problem, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's got to be the texture. It's, it's some, some, something wrong with the texture map or the material. Look at either the material or the texture map. Although if you used your material and just swapped out the HDRI image, then it's not the material. It's got to be the texture map. Okay, so our camera is positioned. That's the camera. It's got to find the rail again in my little list here. No, no. It keeps selecting the um the particles that I'm using for the fogging because it's they're quite large. There we go. Camera rig rail. It's this one up here. And where's the camera? There's the camera. So it's got to be this one attached to this one. Alrighty. Uh, we're going to start by rotating our rail around because it's facing in the wrong direction. We don't want it to face this way, we want it to face the other way. And I keep selecting my um, particles. There we go. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to add both of them to our camera cuts track here. There we go. Now we can rotate them. Let's rotate our rail around so it's facing the other direction. Let's move it back a little bit, move it down a little bit. Uh, actually, let's turn on the cinematic viewport so we can see what we're actually doing here. There we go. Um, I'm just going to make a change and again I'm going to make sure that the sensor height is 18 on my camera. Oh, the other thing I needed to check too with the previous camera was our focal distance. We will have, we'll come back to that in a sec. Um, and the focal distance here I'm going to set at 600. Oh, wow. Select the rail. Now, 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 now. We'll pull it down a little bit. Let's push it forward maybe a little bit. I like the look of that tree there in the corner on the left, that branching tree trunk, that's quite cool. Uh, and the grass here in the corner. We've got a focal length of 600, so we're focused in more in the foreground, less in the background. Initially anyway. Uh, now for our rail,
let's let's extend our rail. So I'm going to select the end point here and hold down the Alt key and drag our rail out a little bit. I'm just trying to visualize how that's going to play. So I'm, I'm just going to run through the position on the rail to see what it's doing. I don't like that real twist we've got going on there. So I'm going to move my rail over a little bit. Maybe forward a little bit. Let's run our rail along again, our camera along our rail. We've still got a little bit of um, a bit of a bump happening at the beginning there, which isn't cool. So let's just smooth this out a little bit more. Okay, that's fine, but. I don't, I think I might want to pull my camera back as we get to this side of the tree trunk so we can get a better overview. So I don't mind being zoomed in for here. As we pass the tree trunk though, I want to start moving the camera out a little bit. So we can either move the rail out or we can move the camera position out. We might try moving the rail out. Uh, Paz says, I have, I have installed Streamlabs OBS yesterday, probably stream soon. Oh, cool, Paz. That's good to hear. You're going to be playing a game or something? Or are you doing creative stuff? Uh, let's get up here and move this end position out as well. Again, I'm just going to run through the rail with my camera. I like to look at the rocks in the background. That's a good thing to be focusing on. We're going to change our depth of field, of course, soon. And I haven't actually used Streamlabs OBS. I use just normal OBS. And that's pretty cool. I've heard good things about Streamlabs OBS. It builds the... Uh, chat client and all that sort of stuff into it so it makes it easier for people to stream. <laughs> uh, Paz says I'm going to teach how to create a 3D cube. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're funny Paz. Well, some people might like to know how to make a 3D cube Paz, I mean you know. I'm just trying to work out my camera here for this um, movement. Again, I'm keeping my camera angled in this direction so that we can see our god rays better. Our camera starts, we pass the tree trunk and then we focus in on the rocks. So we start with a depth of field of 600, foreground in focus. Uh, I'm just actually going to create a keyframe for the um, for the what am I for the for the for the manual focus distance because I wanted to start at 600. Uh, Sniper says right now that sounds useful. There you go. You got a viewer already, Pat. Um, Sniper says at least 10 minutes ago I'd have jumped on that. <laughs> Um, yeah, M maybe try, if you, if, you, if you really like your HDRI texture, map, texture, Sniper Echo, um, maybe take it into, I don't know if you've got access to Photoshop or a paint program, uh, something that can save out a HDRI image anyway. Maybe take it into whatever image editor you're using um, and save it out again to see if that corrects any problems, maybe. Uh, my suggestion would be though to, to use a sphere, really. If you want to do a sky, particularly for um, 
probably because you're doing a uh, a space thing, a spear would work really well. Not that a box doesn't work, um, but spears are easier to work with. A, a box, you're going to have less um, of a problem with pinching of your... Uh, maybe that's why you didn't want to use a spear. With a spear, you can hide where the, the poles pinch by putting it under the ground level. Um, so maybe that's the reason you, you, you're leaning towards using a, a box as opposed to a sphere for space, because you, you won't get any texture distortion where it, with the UVs pinch. Um, so yeah, so I get why you might be wanting to use a box. And a box is the most, is the least uh, performance intensive, so the lightest to use is a box. Can be difficult to get the textures to line up correctly, but yeah. Maybe, yeah, so I, I get where you're coming from, why you might want to use a box. If there's no way you can hide part of that sphere where it might pinch. Yeah. But yeah, if, if it's the texture, maybe try pro just loading it into a, an image program and saving it out again as HDRI. Um, just in case, maybe it'll strip out any problem that might be causing the issue inside of the texture for some reason. And that's if you, if you particularly want to use that um, that HDRI image you've got. So in the, in the foreground is in focus. Let's move our timeline forward. Um, do I want to do a hold here before a camera moves? No, I don't. I'm going to have the camera start moving from from dot, and we'll move to the very end of the timeline. I'm going to just temporarily move my rail along to the end and I'm going to change the depth of field here to 3000 so that moves the background in focus and the foreground slightly out of focus so let's set a keyframe for that let's move through our timeline Let's go to about the middle, so around about five seconds. Uh, I'm going to move my camera rail back to about the middle position. So I'm just trying to gauge the focal, how the focus is changing from foreground in focus to background becoming in focus. Well, that's not too bad. I thought, I thought it might be worse than that, but that's that's cool. All right, now we have the fun part of trying to keyframe our rail, because again, there's some issue going on with sequencer when it, when we start adding uh, keyframes for, for these rigs. I'm going to start by not adding anything at the beginning, and we're going to jump to the. It's only between zero and one for this, so it's not not a big issue, but. Let's jump to the end here. We're going to move our position to one and set a keyframe. Let's move back in our timeline to zero. We'll move our camera rail back to zero and set a keyframe. Now let's move through our timeline and see that's the issue. If you're working with these rigs inside of UE 4.19.2, don't set an initial keyframe, even though you want to. Go to the end and set your keyframe, then jump back to the beginning and set your keyframe. If you set the keyframe at the beginning and then move to the end and set the keyframe, it doesn't, it, it reverts back to number one. It loses the information. I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Epic did not intend it to do that. That's, that, that if they did, that's, that'd be really strange. Uh, because I'm the sort of person, I'm used to working like in After Effects or Premiere Pro, where you set your initial shot, you set your keyframe for what you want, you move along, you make your changes, you set your next keyframe. But in Sequencer, if you do that, it's gonna, it, 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 it forgets the first, it, it jumps back to whatever the setting of the first keyframe was. So I don't know why. <laughs> just something I've noticed so start with the last keyframe and work your way backwards that's my suggestion let's just uh, I'm just going to play this through on the viewport here so I can get an idea on a loop 
what that's looking like. And I'm looking at the depth of field changes as well. Just some nice slow camera shots inside of our cinematic are good. We don't want to go swinging our camera wildly around too much for all of our shots. So depth of field in the foreground. As we move through the timeline, it changes to the background. Just, I'm just worried it may be changing a bit too quickly through here, so I'm going to set another keyframe for the depth of field when we're about here, looking at the tree trunk, uh, 1400, 1500 is too high. Uh, so I'm going to change that back to 600 again. And we'll set our keyframe. Double checking, so we stayed around about 600-ish until we start to pass the tree trunk and then we start to change our depth of field from the foreground to the background so again I'm just going to play that through on a loop and I notice we still don't have transcoding I don't know what's going on with Twitch recently for this week I noticed um, on their Twitter support page they've been having a couple of issues again. It happens every time Twitch make changes to the back end and, and they're just about to introduce sub badges for affiliates. And I, so th I know that they're making changes in their back end and I know every time they do that it has problems. So I am expecting Twitch gods, Twitch people, to get my transcoding back at some stage uh, when they've worked everything out. So my apologies guys if you can't watch me in anything but 1080p. <laughs> so yeah, the foreground in focus, past the tree trunk, background in focus, foreground comes out of focus. And that's fine. It's just a nice, slow, gentle camera move over 10 seconds. Android Lust, it's good to see you. How are you? Android Lust says, even if there isn't transcoding, I'm not lagging today. You're surprised? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We normally get transcoding, um, but yesterday and today we haven't had it. Maybe Twitch are punishing me for taking that week off, even though it wasn't my fault, Twitch. I had to get glasses. I couldn't work. Couldn't do anything. Um, but it's good to hear you're not, you're not um, lagging too much there, Android Lust. So that's fine. We've got, a, we've got two camera movements now. The one where we do our reveal. I, actually, I just need to check that one as well, uh, just for the depth of field. So I'm just going to do a save all here. We're going to jump back, pre uh, jump back quickly to the previous shot. So previous shot would be shot 22. And I, I just want to do this. So uh, I want to check the um, the depth of field. We're starting at 600, so foreground in focus here. As our camera moves along, we really should change the focus to the background. So it may be around about, around about here. I'm just going to go back to zero and um, set a keyframe for our depth of field. Move along our timeline uh, until we get to about here and we're going to change our depth of field to 3000 and set a keyframe so when we come through here we should still be at 3000 which means foreground out of focus background in focus I'm just going to check that now so we start at 600 we start to move up here, but I don't want it to move up. So I want it to stay at 600 until we get to about, about here. So 
Foreground in focus, background out of focus. And then as we move past that, foreground out of focus, background in focus. Okay, let's do a quick save there. And let's create a new camera. What are we up to for our shot count? We're up to shot 24. Well, let's open that up. And let's jump into our perspective viewport here so I can work out what I want my next camera to be. I really like the the fogging that's happening here it's hard to see because it's not in the live shot um, so I think I, I really want a shot that um, looks not that direction but back toward this direction but just one that pans along again to give the viewer context as to where in the scene we are Android Lust says Phil I bet your work could be featured by Unreal I don't know <laughs> Um, maybe. <laughs> I, 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 I have spoken to Unreal about some stuff, but um, yeah, maybe. I will post on the uh, Epic Games forum, the UE4 forum, when, when the cinematic is finished. I'll make a post to the forum and I'll also let uh, the Epic, guy, Epic community manager know, Tim. He wanted me to let him. He wanted me to tell him when I finish the cinematic. So I'll, I'll, I'll let them know once it's done. For sure. Uh, so yeah, we want to set. It, we want an establishing shot here, so that again, uh, the viewer has, a, has an idea of where they are in the world while they're watching this. So I think a camera that just it's just moving along like that could be cool. Um, how high do I want to go? Maybe just seeing a little bit of the water. Um, Android Lost says, yeah, meant Epic Games, not Unreal, yep, yep. Um, I, I, like I said, I've, I've, the community manager for Epic Games um, has popped into my stream a few weeks ago or so, maybe a month ago, before E3, I think. Um, and he wanted me to let him know when I'd finished, and I certainly will do that. So I'll be posting, uh, I'll post a, um, I'll make a post on the UE4 forum uh, when it's ready, linking to the YouTube, to my YouTube channel or to my Twitch channel, wherever I decide to put it uh, for the final cinematic. I'll also post in the Discord servers of um, Epic, it's, it's not Epic Games Discord servers, but they're, uh, what are they called? There's one in Australia which is an Unreal, uh, UE4 for uh, Discord and there's also just a general Unreal Discord. I'll post there as well. I'll let them know. <laughs> and if they want to do anything, then they can contact me and let me know. Alrighty, so yes, yeah, a camera that just moves along. So I'm going to, for this camera, again, a rail camera is probably perfectly cool. It's all we need. So let's throw down a camera rig rail. Move it up. Let's bring in a cinematic camera. Move it up. Wow. I said move it up. Hey, wow. Come on. Oh, wow. I'm just going to delete that camera and do that again. Let me get in here so I can actually get exit. Select my axes correctly. I'm going to move it up. Move it over. Um, and I'm going to rotate it so it's 90 degrees to the rail. So it's not looking down the rail, but looking um, 
at a 90 degree angle from it. Doesn't have to be exactly 90 degrees, just so long as it's facing in the right direction. Might just move it over the rail a bit more too. Um, I, I didn't mention it, but you guys know I'm using tessellation for the uh, for the ground as well. Dynamic tessellation, that is. So when during the cinematic, less noticeable here in the viewport, but it a bit more noticeable perhaps here in the um, in the cinematic viewport. There is dynamic tessellation going on just on the ground. Only the ground. I only use it on the ground, and it's set to a focal distance of the camera. So for performance. It only tessellates in, in, I think it's about a 1500 range around the camera in a circle. Um, it just helps to give the ground a little bit more depth. So we are, we are doing that as well. It's less, you, you don't notice it because, yeah, it's um, only really noticeable either during gameplay or during a cinematic. But you can sort of see it here with the rocks down in that corner where the light is catching. Dynamic tessellation for the win. Alrighty. I'm just going to pull the camera up just a little bit. Just looks like it's sitting a little bit low there. So that's the camera there. I'm going to find my rail. That's my rail. Oh, good. They're right next to each other, so they're easy to, to merge. I'm just going to attach that camera to that rail. And we're going to add them to our sequencer shot. Cool. Now, 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 uh, I'm going to rotate them around because that's not the direction I want them to be facing. I want them to be facing the pond so, and, and sort of on an angle back from the pond, like looking, looking into the background there so we see our God raise more. All right, I'm going to... Turn on our camera view here so we can see what's going on on that camera. Again, I'm going to select the rail. I'm going to move it up a bit because it looks like it's a bit low. We'll move it back because I want a wide shot here. Uh -huh, I see. Can't go too far back. Let's extend our rail out a bit. So if I can find my little end point here. Just gonna move it back so I can see my end point. There we go. Let's get a bird's eye view so I've got a good working area here. And hold down the Alt key and drag out a new point. And hold down the old key and keep dragging out another point. Okay. Now. Um, I'm just going to zoom through the... T I'm just going to move the, the camera along the rail here and look at the cinematic viewpoint to see what what that angle looks like. So I'm just moving along the rail. I'm just going to select this viewport so that um, it updates while I move my rail. Just 
thinking maybe I'll pull the rail back towards the end here and I might extend it a bit more. I think. So I'm going to pull it down further. Again, I'm looking in the cinematic viewport while I move this around to get it, see what the angle looks like. It should be cool. Again, I like just having the leaves in the corner. We can see just a bit of the water in the foreground. So that's cool. Let's move our, um, our rail camera back again. So we're starting here, pulling along, and ending here. Might just rotate the camera up just a little bit, I think. So yeah, I might, might just, just rotate the camera up just a little. Let's move back along our timeline and have a look. Yeah, that's better. Less of the foreground, more of the um, background in focus. Well, I want a little bit of the foreground, a little bit of the marigolds on the grass, but I want more of a focus in the background. Uh, Andrew Lust says, did you delete a leafless tree a few minutes ago? No, 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 I didn't delete it. What I do is, when I want to select something, I, I just click, which highlights it, and then I press the escape key, which um, just deselects it. So if I want to, if I want to make it, like, if I want to select this viewport, I sort of have to click somewhere. So I just click on any object, which makes it highlighted, then I press the escape key, which just deselects it. It keeps me in that viewport. So yeah, D didn't delete anything. Although I have, by mistake in the past, hit the delete key when I meant to hit the escape key <laughs> and actually deleted something, but you can just, just, you can undo it if that happens. So yes, this, this camera is just one where we're moving pretty much horizontal to the pond. Uh, now the depth of field we're working with, actually our camera needs to be changed up as well. So again, we need to go to an 18 millimeter sensor height for our camera. We don't need to, but I want to. Yeah, you thought it disappeared? Yeah, it, it, it sort of looks like it does. Um, no, I didn't delete anything though. No. Because it, the escape key, all it does is deselect. Um, the delete key will delete, but no, I'm, I'm very careful. I, I didn't delete anything, it, but I can see how it, it can look that way. Once you deselect it, you can think it's been deleted because the yellow outline disappears. But no, I deleted nothing. Uh, you'd know if I deleted something because, well, actually maybe not with a delete. I was going to say because the lighting will need to be rebuilt. Usually if you start deleting stuff, um, you'll have to do a rebuild on the lighting. So. Um, the engine will tell you. <laughs> uh, depth of field, depth of field, that's what we're doing. So we changed our camera sensor height. We want to change our depth of field and I'm going to set it to 3000 I think. It defaults to I think 100,000 which is huge. 3000 for the um, size of our little environment here is, is quite enough. Just going to animate our camera now. So let's start at zero with our rail rig at zero. So let's set a key. Move to the end of the time. And we're going to move to our rail rig at the very at number one, so at the end of the rail. 
and we're going to set another key. Uh, we're going to keep our depth of field at 3000 all the way through. So foreground will be slightly out of focus, but the background will stay in focus. So see, I want to select this viewport, so I'm going to click in it and then just press escape to deselect whatever I selected. I'm just going to play this through on a loop, so I want to have a look at it. Again, it's going to be a shot where um, we start, we don't hold anywhere, the camera starts moving immediately and, and keeps moving right to the end of the um, animation. That should be cool. Just, just a simple shot running horizontal with the pond. Um, and it just helps to give the viewer a sense of location within our environment, where they are now, because we've just come up the path. So that's good. Let's do a save all. And let's set up a new camera. Yeah, we're burning through our cameras here, guys. So let's create a new camera, which will be shot 25. Let's open you up and let's jump into our viewport here and decide where we want the next shot to be. Um, I'm going to do a shot, a close up of the deer, but I want to do a few more shots just around the pond. Um, 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 um. See, I really like the look of the, um, the light rays here, which is why I like to keep my camera angled that way as opposed to that way. That and the fact that I don't want to look at the deer just yet either. So um, maybe a shot where our camera just moves across the pond. Maybe like that. So we start our camera uh, maybe around about here. So we've got a shot of the grass and a shot of the rocks. Let's do that. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to use a camera rail, rail rig. You could use a crane, a rail will be easier though. And let's add the cinematic camera. Move it up. We will get some shots of the building as well at some stage soon. The actual main building. I think a nice camera crane shot would look good for the building as we sort of apply up the building. But pond first. One thing at a time. Just want to make sure my camera is sort of lined up there. That should be cool. Move it over just a little bit. So that's our camera. Where's our rail? See, again, I'm selecting the mesh, the particle, fog particles as opposed to the, one, the thing that I want. Still selecting the fog particles. Wow. So annoying. Camera rig rail. Camera. Okay, so I'm just going to attach my camera to my rail. And select both of those and add them to our new shot track. There we go. Now it's facing in the wrong direction, so let's rotate it around. I'm going to get a bit of a bird's eye view so it's easier for me to see where I am. Um, actually, what I want to do here is I'm going to rotate the camera in a minute. 
So I'm going to rotate the rail this way. Select the camera. I'm going to rotate it around 90 degrees or thereabouts. Let's extend our rail. It's getting, it's getting incredibly hard for me to select it without selecting the fog. There we go. Let's move. Move that out. And move it out one more. It's probably too large. I may have to pull it back, but we'll look at that in two seconds. I'm going to turn on the camera viewport here so we can see what the camera is looking at. Select the rail and I may move it back a little bit, I think. Because we wanted to see the rocks in the foreground. Maybe we'll pull it up. No, maybe we'll pull it down. Maybe about there. A little bit lower, a little bit lower. About there. I want to see a bit of the water here. Okay. Let's just move our camera rail along the camera along the rail. So I want to see what positioning is like for our rail. And our rail needs to go back. So Let's move our rail back here and push it further back here. I moved my camera to the end of the rail, so now that when I move the rail I can see, I can position the camera better because I'm looking at what it's looking at. I want this to be... To move it up so I can see what I'm doing. Might pull it up just a little bit as well. I'm going to rotate the camera too when we get to here, but I'm just going to move halfway along the rail so I can get an idea of where the camera is. Okay, I might move the rail back here a little bit as well. We start there, we move along through our fog and our god rays. And we end here. So here I'm going to set a transform for our camera. I like that. That angle's fine. So let's just set some keys. We move along a couple of seconds. I might do a one second hold here, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll work that out when we move the, when we make adjustments to the camera rail. But I think I might hold for one second. Uh, then we move along, we move along. 
to about the halfway mark, so I'm going to move my rail along about halfway. And I might rotate the camera a little bit here. So we start to look back the way we've just come a little bit. Yeah. So I'm just going to set a keyframe here as well. Uh, then we move to the end of the animation. Make sure we move our rail to the end. And I'm going to rotate the camera again. So again, we're looking back towards where we come from. All right, that's all good. Let's just scrub through our timeline on our rail again and have a look at uh, that camera movement. So we start here, move along, camera turns, keep moving, camera keeps turning, till we get to here. I think we need to rotate our camera a little bit at the very beginning. So this gets back to it not remembering, because we set keyframes before we move the rest of them, it doesn't remember. So let's just delete those keyframes from there. And rotate our camera a little bit. And re-add our keyframes again. Come on. I didn't realize my timeline was all the way back there. Keyframes. going to move my rail again because I have I think I may have um, made it a change to the keyframe by mistake yep so let's move to the end of the timeline and just rotate our camera back again a little bit back here. Again, I'm just going to delete these keyframes. And let's re-add them. Again, you see it's, 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 we're getting the keys from the beginning again. It's really annoying. Very, very annoying. Actually, that's not too bad, I don't think. I don't know what I was thinking. That, that doesn't look too bad. No, that's fine. It did remember. Along, along, can we finish here? Uh, it, again, it's reset the keys out at the end by the look of it.
and it's reset the ones at the beginning again. So it either resets the end or the beginning. So let's rotate it back again a little bit. I'm going to be looking about that direction. It's fighting me on every move. You see a giraffe now, Paz? You're joking. <laughs> no giraffe. No giraffe. Smokebird Barbecue, good to see you. How are you? How's things? Keeps wanting to, it keeps rotating my camera when I don't want it to. It keeps losing my keyframe. It's starting to piss me off. Rotate. I want you facing that direction. Select the transform. Press S, add the keyframe. Let's move back. I add the keyframe and it changes the keyframe at the beginning again. It's getting really annoying. It's really starting to piss me off. Five new keyframes. <laughs> That's right. I don't know what is going on with keyframing in Sequencer. You add a keyframe at the beginning. You add a keyframe at the end. The one in the beginning overrides the one on the end. The one on the end overrides the one on the beginning. It's... I don't know what's going on with its keyframing. Oh my god, Phil, that's right. You hate pivot points? <laughs> yeah. Particularly if it's an off-center pivot point or off-angled pivot point, that can be a real problem. Um, it's working my last nerve. The software, it's really working my last nerve. We're at zero. Select my camera. I want to rotate my camera. I want to rotate it out a little bit. So, you know, we're seeing more of the god ray, less of the grass. We're here. In fact, I'll even delete the keyframes that are currently here. Okay, let's rotate our camera again, just in case something weird is going on with, with the keyframing. Rotate. Okay. Select the transform, which is location, rotation, and scale. Add keyframes. Snowberry says, screwed up the pivot points on the gun, and that caused me to put some geometry in the wrong place without noticing. And that's like 45 minutes to fix, yeah. Yeah, you gotta make sure that those pivots are in the right spot, otherwise it can cause all sorts of problems down the line. Um, it should be easy enough for you to move your pivot though, if you want to. It is in max anyway. You can change your pivot point pretty easily. Ugh. Um, okay, so we added our keyframe, but I'm sorry it took 45 minutes for you to fix it, uh, Smokeberry. Um, actually, I'm going to start animating the rail as well. I might as well while we're here. Uh, current position zero, zero, so let's add a keyframe for that. Let's move to the end of the timeline. 1000. Uh, let's add our camera rail, move that to one, and add a keyframe. Uh, Smokeberry says the pivot was just the instigator. I had to correct vertices and their UVs. <laughs> Woe is Smurf indeed. Woe is Smurf. 
it's easy to overlook stuff like that too. It really is. Um, yeah, it can be very easy to overlook anything like that. Oh well, you'll know in future to pay more attention, hey? But it must be coming along. I'm sure it's coming along very well, that gun of yours, Smurfery Barbecue. When are we going to see the final render? We all want to see the final render. Or, you know, a render of everything put together again. If you guys want to see what Smurfer is working on, remember join the Pildust 3D Discord server. Either type exclamation Discord in Twitch chat at any time. Whether I'm streaming or not, that command should work uh, to get an invite link to the Discord server. You can post uh, images in the gallery there, you can post links in Discord, and you can look at Smurfberry's lovely gun, as well as other stuff that other people are working on as well. So. Smurfberry says, I think I'm on the final high-res mesh now. Good to hear. Um, what are you doing at Paul Smurfberry? Are you going to put it in a game engine? Are you just going to do it for your portfolio? Just curious. Um, are you going to do a high-poly to low-poly normal map fake? Android Lust says, final render tonight, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, okay, well, okay, it looks like it's remembered the camera rotation here, so that's cool. Um, Smurfberry says, yeah, the high res is for normal baking, okay. Cool. So I'm assuming it's sort of like um, it's a model that's meant to go into a game engine. That's usually why you do a high to a low bake. Smurfberry says, just for fun, I'm sick of it, and I don't want to put in, you don't want to put it in an engine, just for fun, okay. But it's it's good experience to do that as well, anyway. Smurfberry says, Marmoset renders will be the end, okay. Yep, that's cool. I, again, for anyone that doesn't know, Marmoset is a program you can use to do um, beauty renders of your models. You can even do a, a turntable rotation of your model in Marmoset. It does it very nicely too. So if you don't want to be bothered with setting up renderers inside of your 3D program, you can just load your model up in Marmoset and it'll spit out your beauty shots for you. And it does a very nice job. Uh, Smurfberry says, want to get back to sculpting and not this monstrosity? <laughs> uh, you mean sculpting as in 3D sculpting or do you mean sculpting sculpting? Play sculpting sort of thing. What do you what do you mean? Sculpting. <laughs> You're not gonna give up on the 3D, I smoke Barry. I hope not. That's why I'm on Twitch. It's for you guys to do 3D. But it can be nice to have a break though, from doing 3D all the time. I get that. I do get it. Okay, finally it's remembering the keyframe. So we're starting our camera here, we move along, we move along, along the pond. As we move our camera turns until we get to uh, the end of the animation here. Now I just, I don't like the grass particularly in shot there. Hambone, good to see you Hambone, how are you? Have you been well? What have you been up to? And hello, hello to you too, Hambone. It is good to see you. I hope you're well. Uh, Smurfberry says, in some photography, in some photogrammetry probably, there's a, a rotting tree outside that you want to scan. Cool. Well, that's our next, our next project once we get to this cinematic done. is going to be some photogrammetry, so um, we, can all, we can all do it together. I don't know what I'm going to do my photogrammetry yet. I've still got to go out and take some new pic pictures of something that I want to turn into a new 3D model. Uh, so the next project is me working on a new pro um, new model for my store, and part of that will be photogrammetry. But like I said, I haven't taken the pictures yet, so I've got no idea what they'll be yet. There'll be some some architectural things somewhere that I'll be using probably. Uh, digital sculpting, uh, sculpting Smurfery says, cool. Back to the mutant plants. Oh yes, I remember those mutant plants. But that's right, Smurfberry. It's so long ago, I've almost forgotten. It was looking really cool. Um, 
Yeah. So I, I don't really like the grass in front of the camera here. So what I might do is I might lift the uh, track up a little bit at the end. So if I can get in here and actually select it without selecting my fog particles. Cool. We're at the end of the animation, so I can see in the viewport what my movement is going to look like. Um, I may just pull the track up a little bit just to, so that the um, grass here isn't in view. Well, it could look cool in view. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. What do you guys think? Do you think I should keep the grass in view and like that or lift the track up? I hate making choices. We have to change the focal distance as well. Let's run through the camera here with it moved down. And see, yeah, no, I actually don't like it down that much. <laughs> uh, Smurfery says depth of field the crap out of that grass. We have to change the depth of field. Uh, Hambone says, off topic question, uh, but how long do you think it would take for a, take a new person to become decent at 3D modeling? You like the grass right in front of the frame? Okay. And I think Android Lust says in view as well. Okay. Well, with the grass in view it is. Uh, but getting back to your question, Hambone, um, off topic, how long do you think it would take a new person to become decent at 3D modeling? It really depends on how often you practice, I guess. Um, like if you if you can devote, if you do it every day, like even if you, you, say you can devote a couple of hours a day to playing in a 3D program. I mean, it is all dependent on how talented, how quickly you pick things up. But I'd say you could become a decent modeler with practice two hours a day, five days a week, say, so do it a couple, do it on the weekend and do it a couple of days during the week for two hours each time. I'd say you should be able to. The hardest part is learning the, the software, um, what button does what and all that sort of stuff. So I, I'd say a couple of months and you should be getting quite, quite decent at 3D modeling. So long as you do it a couple of hours, say four times a week. Um, because, yeah, as I was saying, the hardest part of learning, of doing 3D, is just getting used to the software that you're using. Like, what the different buttons do and what the different modifiers mean and what they do. Uh, once you remember, once you get all that down pat, then you can start sculpting away and creating 3D models in no time, really. And then it's the texturing and the UV mapping. They're, they're sort of something you've got to learn to do as well. But you do them all at the same time while you model. Mercury says, I think it took me like one to three years. Well, again, it depends on, on how slow you are to learn new things um, or how fast you are to pick up new things. So it's really dependent on the person. You can't sort of generalize too much. But I would say with, with a decent amount of practice, a couple of months you should start getting pretty competent at 3D modeling. But you've got you to keep doing it. You've got to practice at it. You can't just like do it one hour once a week and expect to get good. You've got to keep, keep at it. And the more you do it, the better you'll get. Um, so it's, it's took Smurf very one to three years. Paz says 15 years, <laughs> 15 years to make a 3D cube. <laughs> You're doing something wrong, Paz, if it takes you 15 years to make a 3D cube. No problem. Um, you, I've been doing 3D though for 15 years. Speaking of 15 years, Paz, it's been, it's been over 15 years that I've been working in 3D. Um, so I've been doing it for quite a while, but I know, I, I, and I, yeah, enough practice with the right sort of like if you pick things up quickly, you you should be okay in a couple of months to start creating some some decent 3D stuff. But the longer you do it, the more you do it, the better you'll get. Regardless of how long you've been doing it for, so you know, even me doing it for as long as I have, the more I do it, the better I'll get. And then you can start learning other software to complement your work. You know, that's that's how I started. I started by learning 3D Studio Max because when I did my uni degree, that's what they taught. One of the subjects was Max. 
So that's what I started with and that's what I still use. Uh, so, and I learned that program well. And um, once I knew Max, I started to branch out into Eon View so I could do my beauty renders and stuff and learned that program well. Um, once I'd done that, then I started to branch into photogrammetry. So I learned that software and how to use it. Uh, so yeah, it sort of builds up gradually over time as to how much you know about what. Uh, Andrew Lust says, the hand burn, if you're, if you're dedicated, it won't take long at all. But you enjoy every moment of it. That's right. When you when you when you enjoy something, it doesn't feel like uh, it, it's not it's not a chore to do it. You don't think, oh wow, I really don't want to load up Max Maya Blender and, and work on this 3D model. You know, there, there can be times when you can get sick of doing 3D, and there are times that I think to myself, I really don't want to do any work today. I just want just want to chill, just want to turn into a blob on the couch and watch a movie or, or something. That's cool. That's all fine. But generally, when you love when you love doing something, you don't. It doesn't feel like work. It's it's fun, and three D is fun. I've told you guys all along. Three D is fun. It's fun, and you can make stuff that doesn't exist. I mean, that's so cool. So cool. Uh, Smurfy says, "I mean, I did some large, complicated scenes early on, but they're beneath my quality standards now. Well, that's it too. I mean, I look back at the early work that I used to, that I've done." And it, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, I didn't know it was terrible at the time. I mean, I thought it was great. And for how, you know, when you're starting out, it, it is good. Because, you know, you haven't got a lot of experience doing stuff. So it's, it's, it's <laughs> looking back at your earlier work, it's always going to be a bit subpar compared to what you can make now. And I'm the same. I look at some of my earlier work and I think, wow. <laughs> wow. You put this online for people to look at? Wow. But it's all good. Everybody's work is good and everybody's at a different skill level and that's all fine. Um, and the more complicated the model too, then the more chance there is for something to go wrong. Andrew Lust says UV mapping is the uh, best part of 3D. Oh wow, I hate UV mapping. I hate it. For me, that's the worst part. I mean, it's really necessary, really important to get a good looking 3D model that must be UV mapped nicely. But wow, I hate doing that. It's too much like Tetris for me. I, like, I don't like to play Tetris even. And UV mapping is like Tetris, moving stuff around to get it all to fit properly and use the most space. And I hate it. I hate it. For me, the most fun part about 3D modeling is making the model and texturing. I like texturing. So I like getting in there and painting stuff. That's why I like using Mari to do my texture painting because um, Substance Painter is great, particularly for game stuff. Um, it, and it, you can get stuff done really quickly in Painter. But I like I like getting in there with the, with my pen, my Wacom tablet, and painting my textures in by hand. I, I like doing that. That's why I like Mari. Uh, Handbone says, cool. I think I set aside two hours, five days a week. Well, that's fine. Two hours, five days a week is, is fine. If you can if you can be disciplined enough to do two hours a day, five days a week, you in a few months you should be becoming quite adept at modelling. And then start, you know, while you're modelling, start practising your UV mapping and your texturing because they're both really important as well. And if you want to get a job in modelling, you, you need to know how to UV map. <coughs> Pardon me. You need to know how to UV map and to texture because they're both important, equally important. But start with the modeling side and then concentrate on the UV mapping and then the texturing. Sort of like, don't, it's probably better not to try and tackle them all at once. You'll just get overwhelmed. Just get good at the modeling, then get good at the UV mapping and then get good at the texturing. And then you'll be good at them all. Uh, taking a break, Handbone says, from the game engine. I was wondering why you weren't doing any programming, Handbone. Uh, Android Lost says, two hours will turn into eight hours. Probably. Yeah, well, that's the other thing too. I mean, I sit, I sit down to do work and I say to myself, oh, I'll get this knocked out in, or well, I'll, I'll devote three, maybe four hours to do this. I start working and before I know it, I've been working away for like eight to ten hours. It just the time disappears, particularly when you work at home. Uh, when I go into the studio, even when I'm at the studio, actually time 
things to disappear because you concentrate in, on what you're doing and you, you, I enjoy what I do, so the time flies by. So you are in, you're completely correct, Android Lust, about time flying. Uh, Smurpery says, learning Maya only took a few months. Well, there you go. Paz says, 3D never ending. That's exactly right, Paz. There's always something new in 3D to learn. Smurpery says, we didn't even have PBR back then, Phil. No, I know we didn't have PBR, physically based rendering and materials. No, it was all spec maps and, you know, <laughs> none of this PBR business. Uh, and, and PBR has made texturing much easier for people and much more realistic looking as well. Uh, Paz says animation, you love animation? Yeah, animation's cool too. I'm not very good at it though. As you guys know, when you look at, when you saw my uh, eagle animation at the beginning of this that we're going to be doing, it's possible, but it's not good. <laughs> but I've never pretended to be an animator. That's another field all unto itself. My animation friends laugh at my animation <laughs> when I try and animate. With good reason. Um, 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 where are we? Sniper says, thanks for the stream, Phil. You got to shoot off. No problem, Sniper Echo. Sorry, I just saw you. Um, your message. I'll see you on Monday next week, hopefully, Sniper. You have a good weekend. Um, actually, it looks like it might be. I'm just going to want to make sure I want this final camera here. Well, I want to get that done and then we can call it a day. So I'm just going to scrub through the timeline here. Uh, now I'm going to start looking at my depth of field. So I'm just going to go back to zero. Now, depth of field, manual focus. Uh, we're going to change our camera to 18 millimeter. I must remember to do that. Um, depth of field here, I want the foreground to be in focus and the background to be out of focus. So, do I want that or don't I? Yeah, I do. So, I'm going to change our depth of field here to 600. That brings the foreground into focus, it should. Yes, good. Uh, so let's add a keyframe here for our depth of focus. Move along our time frame. And when we get to about here, maybe Maybe about here, we'll change the depth of field to around about, let's go to 2000 here. Set a keyframe. We keep going, we keep going, we're at 2000 still until we get to the end. Uh, we have to decide whether we want to keep the grass out of focus or in focus. That's a good question. What do we want to do? Um, well, let, let's see. At the moment we're at 2000. Let's change it here to 600. So that should bring the grass into focus. No, we're still at 2000. It didn't take. Let me just redo that. 600. Let's try 200. That might be better. So let's set a keyframe here. Uh, when we're here, I, I don't actually. Hmm. What do we add here? Okay, that's cool. Maybe when we're here, we'll set the keyframe, the manual focus to 200 as well.
I don't mind it settling on the grass, but I don't know if I really like the camera traveling through the grass quite that much. Two hundred. Change this back up to two hundred. Let's just run through our timeline here so I can see what that animation is going to look like. So we move along the pond, through the god rays, our camera starts to turn, we go through the grass, and we finish in the grass. I just don't know if I like actually going through the grass there. I'm just worried that the grass looks a bit blurry when it's that close to the camera as it moves through. I'm just paying attention to, to the uh, focus distance while it's playing through. So I'm, I'm looking down here at the manual focus to see what it's doing. Might not be too bad. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I'm not sure. Um, but we may leave it there. Let's just do a quick save. We'll do a save all. Um, uh, I won't render this camera out because I want to. I think we'll make some adjustments to it on Monday when I come back next week. But I'll render out the other cameras we've set up. So when we when I come back on Monday, we can review them in video form. Um, but I won't render out this one simply because I'm not completely happy with the end. We're towards the end of the animation of the camera, so we might make some some tweaks to it on Monday. Um, but I do want to thank you guys and girls though very much for hanging out and for watching. Uh, remember, if you're not sure when I'm live, even though you should know, it's every Monday and Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time is when I'm live. But you can see, look at the, in my panels there for that countdown. That'll be a countdown to the next stream in your time zone. Remember to join the Fieldust 3D Discord server by clicking on that blue graphic in my panels. You can get an invite link that way. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Fieldust 3D because I always post when I go live. Uh, again, though, I do want to thank you guys and girls very much for hanging out with me and for being here and for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, I hope you guys and girls have a great weekend uh, and I will be back on live on Monday next week and we'll pick up where we left off here with this camera and um, yeah, we'll make some just some small adjustments I think to the end of the animation. Thank you Paz and thank you for being here everyone. You know, you shouldn't be sorry about your elephant, that was cool. It was cool, but it wasn't an elephant. <laughs> Okay, guys, you have a great weekend, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys and girls on Monday next week. Take care.